I mean, dogs have been a part of the White House since George Washington, but this is a very special occasion. It is so exciting. Major is the very first shelter dog to ever be in the White House. Weirdly, there was one other rescue dog um, who was President Johnson's dog, Yuki, was found at a gas station. So he was technically a rescue dog, but Major is the very first shelter dog. He's, he's the very first shelter dog. Now, what are we going to see in this uh, in this book? Are we going to see the dog's journey from the beginning until, you know, making it to the, his inauguration? <laughs> Kind of, yes. This is very much the story of Major, um, which he was a dog that was abandoned at, as a puppy at an animal shelter in Delaware. Um, and I wanted to let people know a little bit about what adopting from a shelter is like. So it takes us through that process. Um, and then it just takes us through the process of him making best friends with his new family, um, because I think that's what shelter dogs and cats tend to do um, is that they tend to come into the family and they tend to take over. They tend to rescue the family. And all of a sudden you can't imagine your life without them. Exactly. I do. I do like the twist in the, in the book that, you know, the pet is the one who's rescuing the family. It's not the other way around. <laughs> I think that's the story you hear every time you talk to someone who adopted a shelter dog is not how they saved that dog, but how that dog became, you know, their family. Now, I've seen on your Instagram that you are now posting photos of pets that are in need of a, of a home. How has that been going on? And, you know, what made this such a passionate uh, project for you? This has been the coolest week because to, if I'm being very honest, I get very uncomfortable promoting my book. It feels very weird to brag about something. So I was trying to think of a way that I could do it without feeling like I was doing it. And I decided that I wanted to take pictures of my book with some dogs. Um, because I have no problem bragging about dogs. Uh, so I met some shelter dogs that are up for adoption and I took pictures with them. And I have to say, like, I know that we all know they're the best dogs and the most loving dogs, but it has just been the best week because all I did was go around and play with dogs that need homes or play with dogs that are rescues um, that already have homes and hear their families just talk about how much they change their lives. That's amazing. That's amazing. I want to do want to talk a little bit about the history of pets in the White House. You know, when there's a new president in, in office, and then we want to know who is their family, who are their pets? I mean, there's only a handful of presidents without pets, which we won't get into that. But, you know, it, when we <laughs> see Bo, when we see Socks the Cat, when we see, you know, throughout history, what is it about pets uh, relating to, you know, somebody in power like this? You know, I think that it, I have to say I was super excited that pets were coming back to the White House because it's always been something that I loved. And I think it just makes your president who seems so far away um, and so different from you feel a little more human um, when you when you see their pets. But I will say that the current pets we've had have actually been very boring as I started to look into this. I found out that um, there have been alligators in the White House. Um, there have been, Thomas Jefferson had bears in the White House. Um, Martin Van Buren had two tiger cubs that he wanted to keep at the White House and Congress wouldn't let him and they made him give them to a zoo. Um, so in the last, since I've been alive, I think we have really not done a great job of being as exciting as we could with our pets in the White House. I would like to bring back the alligators and the tigers. Oh, I mean, that could have been the original Tiger King. That We could have done a whole different series <laughs> on that. That would have been so much less sad. <laughs> I do want to talk a little bit about your time with, uh, with with John Oliver. Did you watch the Emmys with with Conan? And what was your kind of thought when he jumped on stage with, uh, with him? I mean, I could not be a bigger fan of Conan O'Brien. Um, it is such a loss to us that he's not going to have a show anymore, but I'm excited for him to get to live his life. But honestly, um, it was just exciting for me to see all my friends there winning an Emmy. Um, I, I very much wish it for Conan. I think the weird thing about the Emmys is that I just wish they gave it to everyone. All of the people who write for Late Night are so fantastically talented, and I don't think that giving one of them a trophy actually makes a lot of sense, even though I will happily take the trophy. <laughs> now, what do you think Janice from Accountant would, uh, would say about the, about your new book? 
Jan is in accounting is a character that I played on last week tonight with John Oliver. And she was, uh, she was not a happy lady. Um, she did not like anything. So I think I can firmly say that Janice in accounting would not like this book because I don't think she's ever liked anything. But if she did find a, you know, a, a pet from a shelter, you know, that might change her, might change her perspective. Actually, the last joke I wrote about Janice in accounting was that she had adopted a kitten named Tuppence. Um, so maybe it really did. Maybe that kitten rescued her and she changed. Um, I know that she never came back to the show. So maybe she became a good person. And that could be the next book. You never know. <laughs> I think it could be. <laughs> Jill, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Major makes history in stores now.